That's not the top fan about bunkers going in. Uh, is that been the, the focus in the bowling range of preparing for the West Indies? From us till them or from them to us? From you to them. Oh, no, not really. We've got, we've got a couple of world-class bowlers, um, got a good leggy, he won't be bowling any bumpers. Uh, Nathan Coulton, I was getting better with every game, so every every batsman, we, West Indies batsmen are going to have a different game plan against them, but yeah, a lot of talk about that, but not not specifically. What, what about Adelaide Justin? I mean, Russell Bennett said he was pretty keen to come through the Aussie batsmen, but I'd imagine you'd think that's like your guys are pretty uncomfortable. Yeah, it's going to be one thing that we have to adapt to, and we talked about it this morning, is that we've probably spent four months thinking and playing against spin bowling. And you know, if you think about, we played India throughout the summer in the back end of the one days, then we went to India, played T20 in one day is there, then in Dubai, <coughs> uh, sorry, in the UAE. So our focus has almost solely been on playing uh, spin bowling. Now we have to change. We've seen in this tournament that there's been some good fast bowling so far and we have to adapt to West Indies no doubt will bowl, bowl some, have got some, a number of good fast bowlers. Um, South Africa will be the same, England will be the same. Um, so we're going to have to adapt our game plan a bit and, and adapt pretty quickly. <clears throat> I think the wicket here is pretty good though. Uh, the outfield's fast, the squares are very fast as well. So we'll just have to adapt a little bit to that. But our blokes have spoken about it and they'll be ready for it. Yeah, we did, and we also played against them in our practice game on the nursery ground at Hampshire. So we've had a little taste of it. We've got a good feeling what we'll get from them. They're obviously a very dangerous team. The way they bat, the way they, they're very aggressive with their bowling. Um, but they've got weaknesses as well, and, and we'll, we're playing pretty good cricket. So, like I say, if we can adapt to it and be ready for it, be nice and sharp, then hopefully we'll be OK. How's the PTSD uh, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was, yeah, it was actually. Uh, we've had some really good times here at Trent Bridge and last year was a down. I mean, uh, I remember we turned up and everyone was pretty, the spirits were pretty high and whoa, that was unbelievable. I actually remember walking down to the gate at the end of that boat, almost wanting to give all the boys a hug because it was, it was brutal. There's no doubt about that. The England, we saw it again yesterday, very high scoring games here at Trent Bridge, but uh, there's certainly a few more smiles at the moment in the camp than there was, uh, whatever, 12 months ago or so here. Yes, you didn't sort of have to go up the boys after that you made No, 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 not after that one, no. I think, I think after Cardiff I did, I had a red hot dip at the boys. <laughs> I think it would become legendary in 10 years time, but uh, not in this one. I went with Trent Bridge last year, I was just very flat wicked, we had a young bowling attack. Uh, the last thing they needed was another smack, and they've been smacked for three and a half hours. So it was more a cuddle this time last year. Justin, what sort of changes might we see for this game? Uh, I would say none at this stage. I think we're going with the same team. Uh, we haven't had a look at the wicket yet, but my gut feeling is against the West Indies, um, having won the first game as well, we'll probably go. And we've had a bit of a break in between, so I'd say it'll be the same 11. Um, yeah, there is, because they're left-handers. Um, that said, we probably won't bowl two, two spinners here against the West Indies. Um, so there's always thoughts about Nathan Lyon. Every game there's thoughts about playing Nathan Lyon, but Adam Zamp is doing a really good job for us. There's th there, was, there is thinking about him because of their left-handers, but I think Adam Zamp's got a very good wrong and good top spinner. Uh, Glenn Maxwell's bowling well, so hopefully we'll get some balance there. Some of the other grounds we might look to play two spinners or the matchups for the, the off spinner will be, um, be more appropriate, but probably not here. Justin, how did you assess Bayes in his Um Bayes at the end, impressive not, it didn't seem like he middled too many. How did you analyse that? It's a good sign, isn't it? David Warner gets 90 not out and didn't hit many in the middle and his feet weren't moving like they could be. It's a good sign for me. So uh, he very, you can see the look in his eyes. A lot of people are talking, he looks determined. And uh, for him to, to battle through 90 or 80, whatever it was, and to still be there at the end, get the job done for the team, that's a great sign for us. So how far away is he getting those feet moving? Oh, who knows? Uh, 
hopefully the more time he spends in the middle facing fast bowling again he's just come off playing a lot of cricket in India a bit like a lot of our guys so uh, he's a very good player and, and, and confidence is a, is a beautiful thing so who knows but, but that all said it knows if he batted badly just maybe wasn't as dynamic as you've seen in the past, but he did a brilliant job for the team. And then all the talk has been for the last 12 months about Dave, he has going to fit back in the team. You could not have played a better team innings than he did the other day. And his energy in the field was brilliant. Smiling a lot, he's been great. Just on that track for his game last year, like another very different team now, but <coughs> is the side better if we be able to maybe um, handle the pressure and things aren't going to be like he did that day? Yeah, it's a very different team. If we look back on it, I don't imagine um, well any of our bowlers that were here last year in the team. Uh, we've got David Warner and um, Steve Smith back in the team. Usman Khawaj is in the team. He's had a brilliant. So there's six or, or seven already, and yeah, we're better equipped for it. Yeah, of course. You know, we try and stay as calm as possible. Well, we expect some fireworks from the West Indies. There's going to be times when the boys are going to have to take a deep breath and keep smiling and bowling their best ball. But that comes with experience, and that's what great teams do and great players. <coughs> Yeah, it was really um, sad to hear that he had to go home from Lancashire. I think there's some good processes in place. Uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm over it, but not over it as in I've had enough of it. I mean, I'm over the processes, but he's, um, you know, he's one player. We were hoping he'd play six or seven or eight games of red ball cricket. That was the plan initially. Sometimes plans change, and we'll just have to monitor that over the next little bit. Well, Marcus Harris had got, <clears throat> um, had 1,100 run shield year. He played six test matches. He did a pretty good job, and he, he's on the contract list, so he's a, he's a good young player. He took his opportunity. Um, and again, like we've said all along, there's competition, which is really good. The, I guess the tough thing for Joe's going to be is having not played any cricket leading up to whether he comes back to England or not. Um, but like I say, there's a fair bit to happen before that, before we make a decision on that. Justin, you made your um, test debut against the Windy in a fiery encounter. What's it like going full circle and approaching against him now in his uh... I got hit in the helmet that many times, I can't remember it very well. But <laughs> I made a lot of money out of telling that story though, haven't I, Pete? So, um, uh, yeah, it's always an eye. I mean, the, one thing we know about the West Indies, and particularly with Andre Russell and Chris Gale back in, it's going to be exciting cricket, isn't it? We talk, when I was a kid growing up, it was Calypso cricket. And I think we're seeing plenty of signs of Calypso cricket, the way they're running in, bowling fast. Um, it can be a bit... Um, they're not necessarily going to be bowling the same spot every ball like Kirtley Ambrose, but it's going to be exciting to watch. And they all try and hit sixes most balls, so uh, Darren Bravo's probably a little bit more orthodox. But, yeah, it's exci always exciting playing the West Indies. I, when I was growing up, they were my heroes, and they're not my heroes today because I hope we beat them on Thursday. But um, it was always nice to watch West Indies play cricket. They got a great spirit. It's always been my favourite tour going to the West Indies. I love Car the Caribbean, the way they go about their business. They love their cricket, so it's always exciting to watch. Hopefully, that's not that exciting on Thursday. Yeah, I mean, he's, a, he's been a brilliant player for a long time. He's dangerous, we all know that. But like he'll have his plans against our bowlers, we'll have our plans against him as well. So we know he's dangerous, but they've got a number of dangerous players. With him in the team, they seem to grow a leg. Uh, they take confidence from him. Uh, again, hopefully they don't take too much confidence on Thursday.